We're going to continue now in our English worship service. And so I'd like to invite Pastor Adam to lead us in the preaching of God's word. Thank you, Pastor David. Now I would like to invite you to the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 33 to 40, which is a portion that we set aside to look at the study today. And may the Lord bless us with this portion of scripture. May the Lord help us and bless us and grace us with understanding, especially this portion of the scripture, this passage. I would consider in my little account here, my little book here, myself here, my ability here, is one of the most difficult passages to interpret. And I sought long, I searched the Lord's help, I pray, I study, and I check with many, many, many scholars and giant of the faith, theologian to help me out. Since I have very little on my own, so it's very difficult to say that I have it just from the beginning of our sermon today. I do trust the Lord, the Spirit of God, the grace of God to help us, help me, <clears throat> who trying to do my best to serve God and to serve the church and to serve the Word of God and help you as faithful children of God, student of the Word, to study this, to understand this as well by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now, before we start this, I would like to say one statement that may help us. There are two different things between testing God and God testing us. God testing us, according to the book of James, is a good thing. And throughout the whole Bible, when God tests his people, it's a good thing. When people test God, it's a bad thing. As a matter of fact, the Lord, our Lord Jesus said, to do not tempt God, do not test God. And the whole Bible teaches that we should not test or tempt God. Put God through test. See what God can do. Can't do that. So that a simple way at least for me, to understand this passage. That's one of many other tools and researches and studies that I have. But just to share this with you, to help you out. And it has been a question in my own family since last Sunday I tossed it out. Because we, traditionally we have, we come together after the church, at lunchtime, we share the thought, we review, and we look forward toward the next sermon. And children, one of one of my kids, or many of them, said, so what does it mean? And then I toss a question for the fun of it to stir up their mind and prepare them as well, so regarding Gamaliel, his counsel, his advice. So that was a fun game we play, I call it game, to study, to search, to think, to discuss, what does this mean? So today is a day that we are looking to this passage. And again, Pastor David and I join him and everyone as well. Pray to God that God give us grace to understand this. As again, I say many times, this is a very difficult passage. But when the Holy Spirit helps us, it's not that hard at all. It's become very simple and logical. But it could be very messed up if we don't have the Lord help 
So let us look into Acts chapter 5, verses 33 to 40. Last week we ended at 33. We continue 34, but I have to go back a little bit to 33, and I have to go back a little bit to 29 to 32 later to help us to understand this whole context here. When they heard they, the council, Pharisee, the religious leader, when they heard this, that this is 29 to 32, when they heard this, when they yelled at or when they were so upset at the apostle, the high priest question them and basically scream at them. We strictly charge you not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. And then Peter answered this, verses 29 to 32. That's when they heard this. But Peter and the apostle answer, we must obey God rather than men. That's a very serious statement that help us as well. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you kill by hanging him on, the on a tree. God exalted him. It's getting worse now to the ear of the Pharisees. God exalted him in his, at his right hand as leader or Lord and savior to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sins that's burning statement to religious leader to the israelite especially the religious leader the self-righteous leader and we are witness we are witnesses to these things and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard that, they got so upset now. When they heard that statement, verses 29 to 32, they were enraged. They were enraged, angry, steam up to the point of and wanted to kill them. To kill them. Yes. Now, 34. But a Pharisee in a council named Gamaliel. Soon we will get into Gamaliel background, history, and information regarding him. Gamaliel is one of the two exalted, respected rabbis. I study his background and his the research on him and his grandfather as well, Hallel. Those two were considered the most intelligent, highly respected in the Jewish history. No, cannot compare with Moses and with the prophets, but I'm talking about the teacher of the law. So he is nobody small a teacher of the law a teacher of the law it's not a, just a nonchalant statement here he is very important very intelligent person not just teacher of anything but of the law how in honor the bible it's the scripture itself say that was scripture information and outside the scripture josephus jewish historian other talk about camellia so highly so he is he was a teacher of the law held in honor by all people just remember he's a teacher of the law and his hell honor by all people. Who are the all people? Remember verses 17? Even the high priest 
and all who were with him. That is the party of the Sadducee. In verse 21, the high priest and those who were with him called together the council or the senate of the people of Israel. So you know who Camellia is, who stood up and gave orders. That is not a small statement either. He must be like the Bible said, he was very, he was respected by all, honored, held in honor by all the people. Stood up, he gave orders. That is not a small position here. To, to give order, to give orders to those people, you have to be really powerful individual. Give orders to put the men, the parcel outside for a little while. Let's start off opening statement of a scene here of a study here. This man is impressive. And then he gave his advice here. He said to them, men of Israel, take care of what you are about to do with this men. Very noble, very cautious and careful and powerful. And you know what? They, they did listen to him. Verse 40. They didn't listen to him. Verse 39. So they took his advice. They respect his advice. They took his advice. See that? So Camellia was powerful. Now, his counsel. The reason I thought this is very important, not so much that we understand this knowledge here so we can carry this around and talk about, oh, you know what that means. It's not about that. It's about, we know a heritage, a history. We know how the church of the Lord went through. Our big brothers, the apostle, the early Christian. And other point, we know what to do in our own present time, our life as Christian. And those of you are called to be leaders should know what to do in the church, in our own families, in our own life to make wise decision. Because some wise decisions, some, some decisions are so obvious, but some are not. Some are even dangerous because it sounds so good. Sounds so good. That is why I think it's important. And if we misinterpret this passage, we misinterpret and we misapply. We misteach. To those to hear, we corrupt the hearers. And we corrupt our own life because we misunderstand this. That's very important. That's why I, I handle this more cautious than many other passages. Very difficult. Entitled this passage is The True Servant of God. The true servant of God. And as you read this, you hear this, I want you to think along that what Camellia was giving, that the advice that he gave, was that right? Was wrong? Maybe half half, good or evil or ugly. And please do not jump to the conclusion. Yet, be careful, be careful. True servant of God. 
are they serving God? And better yet, are we serving God? Especially when we open our mouth, give our advice in the word of God, in the counsel of the spirit of God, biblical counsel, scriptural counsel, advice in life in the church, very important. <coughs> men of Israel, take care of what you are about to do with these men. 36, 37, he brought some references, illustration from the history. For before these days, Diodas rose up claiming to be somebody, imply somebody important, Messiah, Redeemer. And a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed. And all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. Verses 36 and 37 speak about these two individuals. The next one is Judas. After him, Judas, uh, Judas the Ga Galilean rose up from the Galilee, rose up in the days of census. That's that's how they wrote. This is the reference to the event, major event in the history, and the local understood that. And drew many, and threw away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. Convincing, historical. And I'm sure Camellia was not tricky to trying to find information to feed his agenda or narrative, to support his narrative. It's not, it's just his understanding. But remember, Camellia is a teacher of the law. He served the law, he served the Lord, he served the temple, he served the nation of Israel. He is supposed to be the light of the Lord, the light of the law. So all the religious leader, so are all of us who serve God. So be careful. I'm saying this again and again, because it's very important. We are in a position to represent God and his word. I'm saying this, especially to myself and for myself, for God's sake. But the name of the Holy God, the name of the Holy Church, the name of the Holy Bible, and the name of the Holy People of God. So he said, verse 38, so in the present case, I tell you, keep away from this man and let them alone. Keep away from this man, let them alone. This is getting dangerous getting difficult and let us be careful let us be sensitive to the holy spirit let us be sensitive to the spirit of god and the wisdom of god and the word of god and the help of god the grace of god for us to understand this because we can misuse this <clears throat> i don't want to be wrong to God. I don't want to be wrong to the word of God. I don't want to be wrong to the church of God. I don't want to be wrong to people, to Camellia, to anyone. <clears throat> that doesn't mean I'm going to be right or I'm going to be correct, I'm be anything at all. And again and again, I'm telling you that we are in a serious need of God's help and grace and the Holy Spirit. Excuse me, one second. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from this man and tell them, and let them alone. For, listen to this. This is getting very sticky. For if this plan 
all this <coughs> undertaking is of men, it will fail. Sounds great. It is true. And so what's the problem with it? It's a problem. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. To, to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God! Exclamation mark. This is serious advice. It's serious. Is that good or bad? Is that biblical, scriptural? The wisdom from God? The wisdom from the world? Or the wisdom from hell? So they took his advice. Camille just told him, leave him alone. Don't touch them. Be careful. So they took his advice. How much did they take his advice? What? Remember, they were so angry, they want to kill him. They were so angry when they heard this. Verse 33, they took his advice. So they didn't kill the apostle. Great. Thank you very much. Verse 40, and they call, and when they had called in the apostle, they didn't kill the apostle, obviously, but they beat them. They beat them. 30, 40 minus one. That is so religious. They're so obedient to the law of God. In the book of Leviticus, command them not to reach 40 with. So they did 39, I'm sure. They scrape it to the brim. And the whip is not a little tiny spang or a little twig. You know, I share this many times from the history, research, and study. All of you know that. Those are weapon, tool, military weapon to kill. Those whip made out of leather and put together as a life, strong, vibrant, and it has thorn, and it has animal claws and tooth and um, sharp edge, um, rocks and stone, bowing, breaded together in this whip. At the end, normally they have a, a rock. At the end, as you whip a person, the whip would wrap around the body and the rock will hit at the end. It will knock your our head, a skull can break, or the ribs, or anywhere. And when they unravel it, the cloth and the tooth of the animal that was designed in the whip can gouge our flesh and peel it off. And rip to the stomach, the intestine can spill out. So it's not a small little smack on a hand here. It's not at all. <coughs> they were so obedient to the law, <coughs> but to their advantage of their anger and rage and desire to kill murderous breath. <coughs> and they were so respected to Camellia, they took his advice. They didn't touch them, so they let weapon touch them instead. They didn't kill them, but they near killed them. That is how tricky people can be. When they want to quote unquote follow the rule, the law. But look at the heart. Look at the heart. Do they really? Follow the law because they love the law, because or because they want to trick the law and the Lord to feed the evil nature and desire. And after that, 
So they beat them up and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus. The very name that can save them, bring repentance, forgiveness of sin. That's so ironic. And then let them go. And let them go. So our study today, of course, there's a lot of points here, but I want to focus on the true or a true servant of God. And not picking up, not picking up, not picking on this Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel in verses 34, not to pick on him, but use this opportunity to study so that we can honor God in our service to God, especially make tough decision, whether a big decision or small decision when it becomes tough or any decision as Christian. But again, again, especially if we are serving God as leader or if we claim to be Christian and walk around in this dark world to let our light shine, our decision are very important at all times. Remember, this guy's a, <clears throat> a teacher of the law and how respected and honored and all the people. <clears throat> the people we know, the high priest, the Sadducee, the council, the senate, as we saw in verses 17 and 21. So we want to step back a little bit to look at this religious leader, to look at Camellia, to look at the Jewish council. <clears throat> and most of us, when we hear the Pharisee, we think of bad thing. We hear the, the, the Jews, we think of bad people. The Jew, the council, the Pharisee, and all these people were the chosen nation. They are, they still are. They were called to be God's own chosen nation. And from them, the whole world should hear the gospel, should see, should know to accept, to get to know the Messiah whom we worship, we love, we believe our Lord Jesus Christ. So being messed up, we know that. And let us not throw all of them under the bus. Throw them all with the dirty bath of religious water. Let me show you how important the Israelite, the temple, the Jews, according to God's plan and God's grace and God's blessing. Isaiah wrote this in the second chapter, the first five verses describe to us how important it is to have the Israelite, the temple and the law and those who obey the law. Isaiah wrote in second chapter, we read these five verses. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amuz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains. Talk about the glorious, talk about the state of Israel, talk about the Messiah, talk about the God of the Bible, talk about the law, talk about the temple. <clears throat> There's the house of the Lord, the mountain of the house of the Lord. Talk about the throne of God. Ultimately talk about God of Israel. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God of uh, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The mountain of the house of the Lord regarding the throne and the temple of God, which speak about God himself. <clears throat> and it shall be lift up 
above the hills and all the nation should flow to it. This is a prophecy. God will be exalted, the throne of God, the son of God, the Messiah. And then again, all nation, Gentiles, us. The same Abrahamic promise. When God say Abraham, from you, from your descendant, you'll be blessed. Your nation, you become a nation as many as the seas, the sand on the sea shore, as many as the stars in the sky, in the heaven. <clears throat> you will be blessed and all the nation will be blessed because of you, because of I me, mean, because of Messiah. Same thing. <coughs> I'm grateful. We are grateful for we are number one sinners. Number two, we Gentiles. We are Gentiles. And we are blessed by our Savior, who is a Jew from Israel. <coughs> On me with my forever linger cough. I told you I'm certified. Prepare myself with hot water and all kind of stuff and load it before the church and during. <clears throat> I'm still fighting it. I appreciate your patience with me. <laughs> and all the nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. To the house of God, to the house of the, the God of Jacob. Jacob, later on, God changes into Israel. And that he may teach us. That he may teach us, he referred to the Lord. God, the Messiah, that he may teach us his ways, the ways of the Lord. That's why we are from little children, our children up to ourselves, to be grounded in the word, in the way of the Lord, so that when the, our children and us too, will not drift away. That he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his, in his paths. We may walk the walk of life, the walk of faith in his path. His way and his path and his law is important to Israel, to the temple. And to the leader, religious leader, for the nation and all the nation, ultimately to know the Messiah. <coughs> Ironically, they are so much now opposing even the name of the Messiah. And to the point of wanting to kill anybody who spread, who teach the truth. You see that? <coughs> Familiar step and say, don't do anything. If they are of God, you cannot overthrow them, and you might be found opposing God. But if not of God, they'll die. And I have example to people who claim that. Sounds very intelligent, sounds very wise. <clears throat> well, out of Zion shall go the law. See? And the word of the Lord <clears throat> from, Jeru from Jerusalem. Four and five. He shall judge between the nations. He's not only the God of Israel, but he's a God of all nations. And not only God, but he is a ruler and a judge 
judge is to make decision of what's good and bad and reward or punish. And so decide dispute for many people. He's a king, he's a judge, he's a priest, and they shall beat, they shall beat the sword into plowshares and the spears into pruning hooks. Nations should not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. We far from that. But the point is when God teach and control and sovereign, take his sovereign position over the whole nation, there's no more war. We don't need to learn war. We don't need to spend money. We don't need to design the weapon of war to kill each other. It's going to be peace. And that remind us the Prince of Peace when he arrived, which has already happened. So remind us, Isaiah chapter nine later talk about, unto us a child was born, unto us a child was given. That's beautiful. Time again. <clears throat> House of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. You see, this is very important to especially religious leader to know the law, to know the path, to know the ways and the path of law and the light of the Lord so they can teach people, they can teach people, not only their people, but the whole world to know the Lord. Camille should know that because he's the teacher of the law. Camille should know how to make decision and tough decision, dispute. And this is regarding the person of Jesus. <clears throat> and by all means, Camille is intelligent, learn, experience individual and religious realm and everything else. Jewish leaders, Jewish religious leaders are not just religiously, not just knowledgeable expert in the law and religion. They are expert in anything and everything come their way. So this is not a small decision, it's not a small person. Gamelia and the council is not a small suggest or advice here. But they are supposed to be the light of the Lord. They're supposed to be wise and smart. They're supposed to be the, the teacher of the law. Again, it sounds like I'm beating drum on them, but it is for all of us Christian, and especially those who serve God as leaders, or those <clears throat> in the church or in a family, or in any relationship or any setting. It's important. I don't want to take a little note here. I don't want to blame things that come attacking me and us, and especially what I'm teaching and preaching. It's just like, it is an obstacle for me to, to not able to just teach and preach and just flow easily. I'm just telling you it's not easy. But go back to what most important here. Teacher of the law, rabbis. By the way, Camellia was, was not just called rabbi. He was called Rabban. Rabban is the highest honor of all rabbis. Rabboni is the most Indian sweet teacher. <clears throat> Of Jesus Rabboni and the ladies who went to the tomb. That's a different story. <clears throat> but familiar here should be, should not should be. He is a teacher of the law, he's a rabban. 
He should know the law. He should know. He should possess wisdom from God. Talk about wisdom from God, and we all pray and wish and desire wisdom from God more than gold and money. To have a wisdom from God is better than gold. The Bible said, "Have good name better than gold." Having having wisdom is better than just good name. That's important. And how do we do that? It is. Not totally mysterious, but it's not just cheap either. But God gave it to us freely for those who obey. Psalm one nineteen one o five. We're all familiar with this, the Word of God, and many cross references talk about the Word of God is true and pure. Jesus pray in John seventeen. But let's look at this. Psalm one nineteen one o five. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This is to all Jewish, all Israelite, all Christian alike. Let alone leaders, fathers, pastors, Sunday school teachers, preachers, rabbis, rabban. The word of God. God's word is a lamp to our feet, to the light to our path. So we should know, especially when it comes something very serious, very intense. To the point of the whole, the whole they call it the whole council, the whole center of Israel, of the people to talk about this topic. To the point of killing people. So this is a very important. One ought to turn to the Lamb and to the light of God, which is the Word of God. Psalm forty-three, three and four as well. This is a prayer of a psalmist, which ought to be our prayers. Let it be our prayers. We should sing this song. Let it be our prayers in Psalm forty-three, three to four. We don't think about that. World doesn't let it be a prayer or whatever. <clears throat> Should have said that. Take your mind back here to Psalm forty-three. Let it be a prayer, sincerely and seriously. Cry out to God and say, "Send out your light and your truth." It's a wish and prayer, earnest desire, in all human soul who are dying or dead. In darkness, how much more for us Christian? How much more for us leaders? We make decision. Sometimes involves serious, other than ourselves and others and others' lives. But thirdly, the greatest involve God, the name of God. Send us your light and your truth. Let it be a prayer. And let them lead us. And the psalmist said, "Let them lead me." But I'm, I'm pl- apply this and apply this to us. Let me go back to just read the passage. Let them bring me to your holy hill, the holy hill. Holy hill will talk about the presence of God, the throne of God, and to your dwelling. Well, this is psalmist, so psalmist. All my prayer is to be in the house of the Lord all my life, all my day. Well, the beauty of the Lord, the light of the Lord, the majestic of the, the God of all gods and lords of all lords. Then I will go to the altar of God. To God, my exceeding joy. To God is my exceeding joy. What is our joy, ladies and gentlemen? What is our joy? And this is exceeding joy to go to the altar of of God. What does that mean? To go to worship God. To go to worship God. To go to offer sacrifice and praise and worship and love and obedience. That is our ought to be 
to God our exceeding joy. Be careful with our joy this day as we walk through life, especially the weariness of life. And I will praise you with the lyre music instrument, but main point, I will praise you. Oh, beautiful last two phrase here. Oh God, my God. Oh God, my God. This is a relationship between us and our creator. This is a relationship between our father and us, beloved, his, his beloved children. This is the relationship between our Messiah, our Savior, our Lord, to redeem people, Christian. How do we get all of this? How do we, we pray? How do we get all the understanding and the wisdom to make decisions both small and great? It's the word of God, the light and the truth, the guidance and obedience from our side. Why does people, I'm, I'm saying people in general, not just Camellia or, or, or people who gave a bad reputation to Christianity or to the law of God or the name of Christian alone. But we have to focus on what, what happened. What is the lost ark here? Why, why we lost the wisdom of God? Why we don't know what to do in life? Especially we are in a position of making serious decision, whether in religious setting or family or business or personal, because everything will be kept account and bring it to the Lord and lay bare at the end of everything. We face our maker. We will face our maker. It is not a small thing. Our decision was hidden and revealed, will be exposed and revealed. Unless we so mess up, we are burying us, we bury our sand, our hand, our head in the sand that we, we ignore the world. And we are upside down and that mess up. And some of us, including myself, sometimes when sin choke our life, choke up the oxygen of the word of God and the wisdom of God into our brain, we cannot think. We can't even breathe, we die. What is it? The Bible gave a clear answer to that, let us take heed to this word of God, especially we are in the season that we know the world is crumbled down now. Psalm 111 is a very familiar statement and counsel from God to all of us, both Jews and Christian. Judeo Christianity should know this. Psalm 111, verse 10, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Beginning of wisdom. There's a problem here. We don't have wisdom and we don't have any fear to the Lord, of the Lord. We don't have any respect. We don't have any fear. This is a healthy fear, reverent worship fear. We become so comfortable with our sin, with ourselves, and with even with God. A teacher of the law, like Amelia, should should fear God more than anybody. So he would have the wisdom to lead God's people. Um, you know that every time we talk about wisdom, we think about the most intelligent person, Solomon. And we saw that how he got wisdom. And I'm sure in the New Testament, the book of James talked about if you lack the wisdom, you ask. That's important. The fear of the Lord is beginning the wisdom. And those who practice it have 
a good understanding. Start from fear and from start from fear and start from obeying. As the apostle say, you should we obey God or man? You know, we should obey God. His praise endures forever. This conclude in praising God. So the fear of the Lord, to obey the Lord, to praise God, bind bound up in one soul, in 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 the soul of a person who is wise. Fear, obedient, and praising. The fear of the Lord should be in our heart, a forefront of the mind, of our soul. To obey it, it should be in every footstep in our, our life take step in a normal walking of life. Praise God is in our heart. Our grace. If we practice that, we will make successful decisions at all times. Jamelia should have all of that. The same thing in Proverbs 9 10. Earlier we have Psalm 111 10. This one, Proverbs 9 10. They're both in the 10 verses. <clears throat> the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. See, to fear the Lord and the knowledge to know who he is is our wisdom and insight that we become put in the vernacular and we become super smart. And the smart is not a Greek smart, it's a Hebrew smart. Greek smart is a head knowledge. Hebrew smart is applica applicable, application, practice. And Gamaliel should have all of that, especially he's not just a Greek philosopher. He's not, not just, he's not a Greek philosopher. He is a rabban, the teacher of the law. And a good example we see, a heart of a person who receives wisdom from God, no other than Solomon, King Solomon. I would like to invite you to turn to First King, First King, chapter three, verses three to fifteen. I'm going to read through this real quick. You know this passage quite well. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and made offering at the high places because he didn't have the temple yet. Verse 4, verse 4 and 5, very important, listen to this. And the king went to Gideon to sacrifice there, for there was, that was a great high place. Solomon used, used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. Great sacrifice. And good thing he's rich. A thousand burnt offerings. But we know that he loved the Lord. He walked in the law of the Lord, in the law that his father taught him. Verse five, important. I, thought, I fell in love with this passage since the very early beginning of my Christian walk, and I was impressed. I was blessed. I was comforted because I knew, and I still know that I don't have much wisdom, intelligence, and ability in many ways and many things. But I do desire to serve God. And I do desire to know what to do. So I won't mess up. I won't make mistakes. I won't dishonor God. I won't bl blaspheme God. And I don't, I won't corrupt the hearers so it's always been it doesn't mean i'm solomon it doesn't mean i receive what solomon received but i'm just saying this ought to be our serious prayer learn from solomon at gideon the lord appeared to solomon in a dream by night and again a dream by night and some people say oh see look god appeared to people in a dream by night that is 
a topic in itself. But point is, we are not Solomon. We are not in Old Testament, and Solomon are not us. Solomon, uh, Solomon was not uh, is not us, and Solomon is not in the New Testament. And Solomon does not have the whole Bible like us. Solomon doesn't have the Messiah, know the Messiah as we do know. He knew very little uh, according to what he knew. And how God appeared to the patriarch, to the fathers back then, is different from the present day. Present day, God appeared, talked to us through his son. His son is his word, and his son gave us a legacy, uh, the word of God and the Holy Spirit. And God speak to us still, but in different way. So let's put that aside. And God appeared to Solomon, basically, and he said to Solomon, this powerful, awesome, treasure, priceless statement. Can you imagine receiving this statement from God? Ask what I shall give you. Wow, ask what I shall give you. What a heavenly blank check. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness in righteousness and in uprightness of heart toward you. What a beautiful statement, character and teaching to all of us. Wow, what a life. And some of you but, but, but you, don't, you don't talk about David's mistake. Let's not go there. Oh, you don't talk about uh, Solomon's mistake. We all have mistakes. But the Bible is pointing out something positive, something positive, something glorious, something praiseworthy. That we ought to draw our mind toward this positive thing instead of pointing finger as if he's so, so holy. The holy God forgave these people. In the Bible clearly he walked, say that David walked before God in faithfulness and righteousness and in uprightness of heart toward God. What more can we say? We are sinners. No better than David, King David. And we, if we were to give the opportunity and time, we would have, we would have been messed up more than David, King David. Why? Because King David had this. He walked before the Lord in faithfulness and righteousness and uprightness of heart toward God. Do we have that? Can we ask that question instead? It's something we need to focus on. Not be harsh and hard on Rabban Gamaliel, but I just want to ask him, Gamaliel, you fear the Lord? You have the knowledge of the Lord. I'm sure you do. You are the teacher of the law. You walk before the Lord, the Lord with, with faithfulness and uprightness. Um, I mean, righteousness and uprightness of your heart toward the Lord. Hmm. I'm not being harsh. And I'm just using this as a tool, divine tool and and divine blessing and protection to all of us as Christians who represent the light of God, and especially those of us who are leaders and at our own right, different levels. Be careful. And you have kept Solomon when continue to the Lord, spoke to the Lord, and you have kept for him, for King David, his father, his great and steadfast love and given have given him a son. Very humble, right? Yeah. Giving him a son to sit on his throne this day. Sincere. Sincere statement and humble statement 
to talk about God's grace given to King David to give King David a son. He spoke as a third party himself. Beautiful, humble, sincere. And now, O oh Lord, my God. And now, O oh Lord, my God. You have made your servant king. Beautiful contrast, parallel, combined concept here. Servant king. In place of David, my father. Although I am but a little child. He's not talking about a little child, like a immature uh, little kid. No, he's talking about his, uh, his true ability and nature compared to his father, compared to God right now. Basically, I am nobody. It's not like, you're nobody, you're talking to me. You know what I'm talking about. This is not literally a little child or nobody. Talk about his humility. Be humble, sincere, sincerely humble him. I do not know how to go out or come in. What a beautiful character. You know, when you see people like that genuinely, that is a king, that is a queen, that's a true leader. When you see people say, I am somebody, I'm a big whatever, I know everything as. Yeah. Something you need to run away from. Verse 8, 9, and 10. Listen to this. And your servant is in the, in the midst of your people. Wow. Your servant in the midst of your people. And he's king, king of Israel. But he acknowledged this people are God, the God's own people. Whom you have chosen, he recognized the chosen nation, a great people. Not because of these people are great, it's because they are, they've been chosen. This modified phrase here to give the adjective of those people who've been chosen, those great people here, God's people. Too many to be numbered and counted for multitude. This is not, again, about the people, it's about God. Reflects God, reflects God's power, reflects God's choice, reflects God's decision. And then he asked Solomon, give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind. He prayed for an understanding mind. As God said, ask for anything, he said, I want wisdom. I want to understand. To understand, to govern your people, to serve you, to serve others. It's such an amazing attitude, words, and pray that we all should learn from. And I'm so familiar now, King Solomon and this history quite well. That I may discern, I may discern, I may know clearly between good and evil. Between good and evil. For who is able to govern this, your great people? Rhetorical question, no one. Unless the discernment, the gift of understanding mind, the wisdom, the grace from God bestowed upon that person. The Pharisee, the religious leader, the rabbis, Gamaliel, should know this, should know this. And God said to him, <coughs> this beautiful part, we love this last part, 11 to 15. And God said to him, because you have asked this, ask this for wisdom, and at the same time have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or the life of your enemies, health, wealth, and prosperity, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. So I say it again, again, to discern what is right. That's, no, that's the most important, if anything at all, that's 
That is what we ask, what we need, what we pray for, and what we walk by, and what we practice, we cherish, we, we, we thank and worship God for that. Behold, I now do according to what? To your word. Wow. Hmm. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind. Oh, do you understand this statement? God answered prayer by giving a wise and understanding mind to people. Also, James said, if you lack of wisdom, pray and ask God. Mm. So that none like you has been before you and none like you shall arise after you. People say, oh, see, so we don't need to ask. We don't. That's out of context. We, we're not going to be this special like King Solomon, but doesn't mean we cannot ask for wisdom in the discerning mind to know what's right and what's wrong. And if you will walk in my ways, obedient, practice, practical step in obedience from the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding mind, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. See? It's conditional him. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream, a, vi a dream, a vision, that, a real conversation with God, but through his dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the Lord, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings and peace offering and made a feast for all his servants. There's a lot to say here, but our point today here is about wisdom, understanding mind from God, the spirit of his, the, the spirit of humbleness and sincere and, and, and revere and fear of the Lord and, and care for God's people. Hmm. And Gamaliel, the teacher of the law, as we saw in our text, Acts chapter 5, 34, to 40 here, in the midst of his people were enraged and wanted to kill people. Familiar, a teacher of the law who was held in honor by all the people here has privilege and responsibility should make a precise biblical wisdom decision, wise decision. The spirit of God, the word of God, the wisdom of God should rest upon a person such as level. See, he stood up. As we saw that, he command people listen to him, give counsel. Was 35 men of Israel, take heed, take care of what you're about to do with this man. And he uh, cite his references. And But the worst thing is, or the, the serious thing is his application here, which puzzle a lot of people. And we are to study, we are to learn, we are to seriously learn this passage, learn this teaching so that we too can honor God when we face difficult, especially when it comes to the name of God and those who serve God the name of Christ, those who spread the gospel. So the present, so in the present, I tell you, keep away from this man and let them alone. For this is the plan. For if this plan or this undertaking of, is of man, it will fail. True, true. But you are familiar, what do you say? Why do you, you leave it to, to the hand of the fate, who to the hand of the nature, of the element? And then, if this is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them, and you might even be found opposing God. 
So are you a servant of God or are you just like uh, test God if God if test it out, test it out? I have to know that Jesus taught in public place for three years before miracle. After knowing that Jesus body in the empty tomb, after heard all that Jesus appeared, resurrected. And anything at all, Jesus said, if you don't believe me, believe the work I do. And now if you don't believe the apostle, look at the work they have been doing. What part you don't understand? You know the law, you know the history, you know, you know the current reports for the last three years and now the apostle. And you come along and say, well, wow, is this from God? It's going to be, you cannot oppose. It's not even this from God. We better go and join them. It's not even that. It's just like they pull themselves as a sect, as a group, as a people not belong to 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 to, to the rebels or or with God either. That is that is coward. That is ignorant. There's no spine, no backbone. That's wrong. Yes, the statement in itself is right, but the circumstance to say things like this is wrong. So what, 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 he tried to protect the apostle from being killed. That's good. Thank you very much. But that is not enough. This is the apostle of Jesus, apostle of the Messiah. You should learn, you should know, you should go to the scripture and find out from the birth of Christ all the way to the fulfillment of the crucifixion and resurrection. And then the sign, the miracle, miraculous power in the hand to, of the apostle. And you come and say, and try to give some counsel related to a true information, but seem to fit your narrative that if these people, it's just fake, they're going to die either way. Well, if they are fake, find out and stop them yourself. Is it from God? If they are from God, you better bow and worship God and join them. How come it's from God? Just let them alone either. Talk as if you are a Gentile, a philosopher of another nation. This is very, very sad for someone who that caliber to make this decision. And here, respectfully, I am no better than Camellia far from that in education and position and whatever. But I'm just sad to see that when people have all the power to make this, the right decision, especially involving God, involving God's wills and, and peoples and church and truth and step back and took the route of washing hand. I don't know, I don't know. When people say, I don't know, I'm worried when people don't know in that tone. There's no conviction. Daniel, the prophet, was a young per person who got exiled with a whole bunch of Jewish young people. Didn't know much, nowhere close to Gamaliel, but he grew up in the wisdom of God obedient to God. And he didn't let it thing fall into the faith of the natural element, the course of chance. He clearly made this. Oh, oh live long the king, Nebuchadnezzar. Let it be known to you. 
God will save us. But if God doesn't save us, let me tell you, at least you know I will not bow to an idol. I love it. That's a character. Not say, oh, if God's real, he's going to save us. If it's not God, not, God is not real, we're going to die. No, he said, either way, it doesn't matter. But one, one thing is matter to me and to you now that I will not bow. With all respect, King, I will not bow to an idol. That's Camilla should have the spirit. And many other people. In old in history, in Old Testament and New Testament. Jesus himself. Pilate said, you know, I have the power to release you. You want to <laughs> want a little bit cooperate with me, so maybe I let you go. Jesus was strong. He said, I cannot, basically I paraphrase, I'm telling you the truth that I am the king of the Jews. Basically, I, I, I stand on my conviction on the truth, regardless if I die. Paul, Paul, Emilia's own prodigy, not in that sense, and best student. The Bible said he's even smarter than Emilia. <clears throat> Stood strong. In the midst of tough life, and to even unto death, he did not back down. He did not back down. He stood for God. He stood for the truth. He defended the truth. He defended God. He defended God's people. He did not say, "Ah, oh, if it's from God, um, nothing we can do about it." Even that is not. If it's from God, I'm with God. No, not even that. If from men, let it be. It's just indifferent. Indifferent is a serious problem, thorough, opposing the truth, the gospel, and God. Hostile is bad, but at least clearly upfront. But indifferent is very tricky. Very tricky. We cannot take that position. So I don't know, I don't know. And then, and then pray to God for wisdom. Start obeying little God give us. And then start practicing and start caring and start making the right decision according to the wisdom and the word and the, the, the word and the light of God. To do that is a fear of the Lord beginning all of that. And you and I, you and I have more than all of that. Solomon had asked and prayed and received for Pray for and receive because we have our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the Bible. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the church. I would like to conclude this to remind us that when we are in darkness, when we are in confusion and, and uncertain, when we are in fear, even unto death. Remember John chapter 8, verse 12. I read this. I quote this many times. It's still lovely. This is eternal. Jesus claim and proclaim and taught this and which recorded throughout eternity. For it is true for who he is and what it is, and it is to our blessing and benefit. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will walk, will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I am the light of the world. And who obeys and follow me will have the light of life. It's so sad that many people, familiar, and any of us, teacher of the law, student of the law, educated, a position, have intelligent by birth, high IQ, for which to go to school, to go to higher education, 
privilege to read and understand the Bible. And sadly, don't have the light, the wisdom, the discernment to protect, to honor God's name, the Messiah, God's people, and the gospel. And that will trigger down to everything in life, the way they make decisions. It's contaminated and damn and dark and death. That's what happened. And we will face our God. We will face our judge. Especially we were given much and require much of us. On the contrary, Jesus said, whoever follows me, whoever follows me, is a light that shines into darkness. He is a light. He's a light of life. He's given that light of life to all of us. And if anyone hear this teaching first time and see the light of God, the light of the Messiah, the light of the world, Jesus himself is calling you to walk away from darkness, to follow the light of the world, the light of the life, the light. I invite you to come to Jesus, to bow your knees and spirit to him, to thank him for the grace that he, he is calling you. He's, he's, he's shining his light into your soul and my soul and our souls. And to receive this grace of repentance, to receive this grace of us asking for forgiveness, to give this grace of faith, to, pre- to receive this grace, to love, to obey, to believe in Jesus. And may the light of the world, Jesus himself, lead you out of darkness and make decisions both small and great, especially those of spiritual decision. And if you are in the leadership position in some source, may God lead you to lead people for his glorious light. Amen. I would like to invite Pastor David to come in to conclude the sermon today. Thank you, Pastor Adam. This is a a great warning in the life of Gamaliel as there is a person that seems to have wisdom that even seems to be on God's side. And yet, uh, as we've seen, uh, didn't truly fear God, didn't truly walk in wisdom, uh, but and, and wouldn't take a side, didn't, was not willing to decide for or against God. But in the end, he was, by, by doing that, by being indecisive, acted against God. And so for us, as we walk out our faith in our life, we pray that we would walk in true wisdom as believers in Christ. And not just believers, but followers of Christ, people who know the Savior and follow after him. And so as we ask the Lord to help us to apply this message, uh, this is what we're going to pray for. Let's join together now as we ask God to help us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your grace in hearing this message. And Lord, as we've seen in the life of Gamaliel, as he made decisions that that seem to be so um, supportive of the apostles as he wanted to stop them from being executed and and seemed to have uh, some sense of reason. But Lord, ultimately, that should have led him to a point where he would pursue what the apostles were teaching and to examine it and to decide for or against based on your scriptures. But Lord, if ever there was a man who seemed to have a 
a great deal of strength. But Lord, you are the one who examines the hearts and you've shown him to be somebody that is, that is empty, somebody who did not take a stand at all. And Lord, you call for us to follow after your son, Jesus Christ. We who have heard the truth of your word and even the words of Jesus echo in our ears to deny ourselves, take up our cross daily and follow after him. Lord, that that true wisdom is a wisdom that pursues you. True wisdom is a wisdom that receives your word and acts upon it. So Lord, may we be such men and women that would follow after you with our whole hearts, Lord, examining our lives, uh, growing in wisdom, Lord. We, we know that wisdom is something that is to be pursued, something that is to be repeatedly and constantly sought after and applied. And so, Lord, may we be such individuals, Lord, so that as in our lives and as leaders in home and, and in our families and in your church, Lord, that we can lead in a way that, that is decisive, in a way that is honoring to you, Lord. And may we see those things that we've done in our lives that is not wise, that is, goes against wisdom, oh Lord, and help us to repent of those things. Help us, O oh Lord, because we want to, we want the, the sum of our lives to be praised to your name. Lord, we desire to not walk in the patterns of this world that we did formerly, Lord, but that we would walk after you wholeheartedly, abandoning all that, that is contrary to your will and to just wholeheartedly pursue you in everything, Lord. So help us, Lord, by your spirit, would you apply these things to our lives so that we could be a people who honor your name. And so Lord, we pray these things by your grace, according to the power of your spirit who convicts us and builds us up to be more like our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we commit this to you, O Lord. May we on our part work out our salvation with fear and trembling, Lord, understanding that on your part, Lord, that it is you who works in us both to will and to work for your good pleasure. And so, Lord, we thank you and we commit this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, may we walk in true wisdom as we follow after God. And may God be glorified in everything. To God be the glory. I'll see you next week.